Hi, my name is Jan Fjorka with the Atchison Planetarium and Cranbrook Institute of Science. Hopefully, you've been outside of late, safely enjoying some of the beautiful clear evenings that we've been having here in South Michigan. If so, no doubt you would have been seeing the bright star-like object in our western sky in the early evening. Over time, it's even been given the nicknames of Evening Star and Morning Star, depending upon when it's visible. But think about this. Its motion in our sky is not like a star. Its location in our sky seems to change, sometimes quite rapidly. Even now, notice that it's not as high in the western sky in the early evening as it was a few weeks ago and it won't be long before it seems to vanish from view. This is something even our ancestors noticed, that there were a number of stars that moved differently to others. It was actually the ancient Greeks who first coined the term Asteris Planetae, meaning wandering stars. They noticed that they moved through only certain constellations, which evolved into the zodiac, special constellations thought to have magic powers to be able to do this. Nowadays, we know it's nothing to do with magic. It's really the flatness of the solar system that's the cause. We call this apparent path the ecliptic. As time went by, they were awarded the names of Roman gods and goddesses, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Earth is actually the only planet in the solar system not named after a mythological being. Instead, its name is derived from the Old English word Ertha and the Anglo-Saxon word Erda, which means ground or soil. In the year 1610, the Italian astronomer Galileo was the very first to turn a crude form of telescope towards one of them, Jupiter, and sparked a revolution in our understanding of what these wandering stars really were. They were planets, other worlds in addition to our own. In the decades that followed Galileo, the daring idea that got him and the famous Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus into trouble with the authorities that they were really orbiting the sun and not the earth became an accepted fact. And then, as the centuries passed, we further enhanced our knowledge with the discovery of even more worlds that we never even knew were there. Worlds beyond us being able to see with just a casual glance of the unaided eye. Uranus, then Neptune, and then Pluto. And one of the moons. So many incredible and diverse moons were discovered in orbit around most of those planets too. Some are larger than small planets, and some just about the size of a small town. And what about the asteroid belt, the Kuiper belt, the Oort cloud, other dwarf planets of which Pluto is now just one. Boo, I hear some of you say. Even now, we've discovered worlds outside of our own solar system orbiting around other stars. And it's the fact that you can see five of them with just your eyes alone, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, that makes them such a fascinating sight for us all. That morning and evening star is really the planet Venus. And if you're an early riser, you will have also been seeing the planets that my colleague and friend Ray Bullock has been sharing in his morning sky tours, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. But don't worry if you're more of a night owl like I am. They'll be making their way into the evening sky during the summer as seen for Michigan. So why do these planets wander and change their positions? Well, it's because they, and also ourselves, are orbiting around the sun. So we see them in different positions in our sky as a result. Amazing that we can witness other planets orbiting the sun with just our eyes. But where did the planets of our solar system come from? What was around before that? Well, thanks to our many discoveries of other planetary systems around stars other than the Sun that are in various stages of formation, 
we've been able to build up a pretty good picture of what happened in the early history of our own. Our sun began its life as a newborn star four and a half billion years ago. Around this newly formed star swirled an enormous ring of gas and dust called a protoplanetary disk, sometimes also referred to as an accretion disk. Out of this swirling cauldron of matter, the planets were born as this material came together or accreted through electrostatic and gravitational forces into planetesimals in different orbits around the sun, but all within the same plane. These planetesimals became the building blocks that grew into worlds. Although we're not totally sure, current thinking is that the giant planet Jupiter formed first, swallowing up huge amounts of this protoplanetary disk material, followed by Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and then finally the inner planets, including our precious Earth, were the last to coalesce. The solar system was born. Two main groups of planets, the inner solar system, rocky worlds with solid ground, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And then, separated by a gap called the asteroid belt, is the outer solar system, giant worlds where everything we see is floating in the sky. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And then comparatively tiny Pluto, the oddball little world that just didn't quite seem to fit in. But then more Pluto type objects were discovered and we realized that Pluto was just one of many similar worlds. These worlds, all of them beckon to us to explore them, to know them as places rather than just dots in the sky. So, we are embarking on a tour of our solar system, our immediate neighborhood in space. It is a huge but fascinating subject to cover as we have come so far in this endeavor within a relatively short period of time in human history. In the weeks to come, we'll explore each of these fascinating worlds in more detail. And we'll look at some of their moons too, many of which have every reason to be called worlds in their own right. Next week, we'll travel to a world where the sun appears three times bigger in the sky than on Earth and is seven times hotter too, Mercury. Thanks for watching and happy planet gazing.